This video is primarily for the maker, inventor, or engineer interested in robotics or mechatronics, alternate approaches to robotics, or even those interested in kinetic sculpture or possibly cosplay. This is the introductory video for a project that I call the GLUS Pusher. The word GLUS is a portmanteau of slug, glass, and truss. About 25 years ago, I was carefully studying the way of thinking popularized by Buckminster Fuller, which he called synergetics. Synergetics argues that you should think primarily in terms of triangles. Bucky created a number of omni-triangulated structures, of which the geodesic dome is the most famous. However, he also invented a space-filling space truss known as the octet truss, which exploits the remarkable fact that you can create a repeatable slab of plain tiling forms out of alternating octahedra and tetrahedra. In the octet truss, every structure member is the same length. I've always been fascinated with the idea that if we could make a structural member that could change its length, growing shorter or longer on command, we could coordinate many members moving at the same time, we could construct a machine or robot that would be quite unlike existing robots that depend very heavily on wheels and articulated joints. We could make a robot that oozes like a slug. We could make a dancing truss. Rather than simulating the human form, which is a slightly arrogant thing to do, we could mimic worms, slugs, and the human tongue. This seems both a humbler approach to robotics and would have the advantage of massive mod modularity and scalability. Such robots could be made of gloss, a truss that is not crystal but rather a glass. You could join a 50-member gloss to a 100-member gloss and have a 150-member gloss. I thus use the word gloss as the word clay is used as a substantive noun. Such a flexible gloss would be able to do things that existing robots find difficult such as climb over a building, climb up a tree, fold itself into the bed of a pickup truck, tolerate the dysfunction of some fraction of its members, burrow through earth like a worm, swim in a variety of ways. I hope this project creates a new subfield of endeavor that I call glossionics. I hope controlling a gluss will become an interesting field of research. The difficult problem of programming a gluss to climb over a building appears to exist in the thin boundary between the impossible and the trivial. The impossible need not be attempted, and the trivial is a poor use of our precious time. I do not necessarily claim that this is a particularly novel approach. For example, NASA has constructed robots based on a different principle, the principle of tensegrity, which is also popularized by Buckminster Fuller. It is entirely possible to start constructing a GLUS robot from existing machines that you can purchase, which are generally called linear actuators. For example, the firm Fidgets, which provides a num lot of robotics, sells and resells uh, actuators starting at about $70. Other firms make tubular linear motors, which are probably more expensive since they require that you ask for a quote. I may purchase some of these devices to learn more about them. I believe these systems are generally good machines, perhaps too good. By that I mean they are too heavy, too expensive, too forceful, and too slow. What we, the hobbyist who would attempt to make GLUS robots, really need is something closer to a $10 or $20 price point to make building a 100-member GLUS reasonable. Additionally, if we could develop an open-source hardware design, we would allow makers and DIY experimenters everywhere to experiment with the actual hardware design of the pusher itself. Our goal here is to harness the tremendous creativity of the maker movement by decreasing the cost of this form of experimentation. I believe in an example of this occurred with 3D printers, which were originally developed in universities. However, as the price got lower and lower, first hackerspaces and then individuals began using 3D printers to a much greater degree and now are both experimenting with 3D printing and pushing the state of the art. What we would like to do with the 3D Gluss Pusher project, I'm sorry, the Gluss Pusher project, is to develop hardware inexpensive enough that we can tap into the creativity of the maker movement so that a large number of brains can start working on the problem of how to control and build these things in a useful manner. Do I believe that I, or we together, can do a better job engineering such an actuator than the firms that are already doing so? No, I do not. In the first place, I am a computer scientist, and my understanding of electrical engineering and physics is sketchy. What we can do together is to explore a relatively unexplored part of the design spectrum, what a cynic might call the shabby part of the design spectrum, where the gloss pusher is less strong and possibly less precise than existing designs. Nonetheless, this part of the design spectrum may be very valuable to makers. My basic approach so far has been to build a tubular linear stepper motor that is as simple as possible. <clears throat> the video below shows the current prototype in operation. 
I suspect you will get more from the video than a spoken explanation, but let me try to explain it. This is basically a tubular linear motor. The pusher rod is an acrylic rod. Into it are placed one half inch long by one quarter inch in diameter rare earth magnets which can be obtained from apex magnets for ten dollars for ten. The magnets are carefully spaced exactly one half inch apart in the rod facing each other in a repulsive way. That is, the north pole of one magnet faces the north pole of the next magnet. This produces a magnetic comb of alternating polarity. The motor itself is two coils of magnets spaced precisely 1.5 inches apart. When voltage is applied to one coil, it seeks a stable position, in this case centered directly on top of a magnet. Two coils are required to avoid a dead spot. An Arduino microcontroller, microcontroller is used to control the application of an external voltage. An external power is required because the coils draw a few amps at 5 volts, far more than the Arduino can source. Whenever a coil is centered, the other coil is not. An application of a voltage to the other coil will drive the push rod left or right relative to the coil bobbins. Thus, moving is always applying energy to alternate coils if you are moving one step at a time. The Arduino stores the state of which coil is centered over the magnet and which magnet it is over. The direction of the voltage to apply depends on which direction you want to go. At present, there is no ability to sense the state of the push rod. If you move the push rod by hand, or if a force prevents it from moving, the Arduino program will do the wrong thing on its next command. A major goal of future work is to provide robust position sensing. We need to be able to ask the microcontroller where the member is and determine when it is failing to accomplish our command to move to given position. Although there are a huge number of uses for a functional glass pusher. I have found that it is often best to be driven by a specific application, even in attempting to develop something completely general. As Kent Beck taught me, I always try to do the simplest thing that could possibly work. The simplest actual use of a glass pusher that I can imagine outside of some art project is to create a triangle of two glass pushers and one fixed member to make a planar robot. This could be hung on a wall or laid on a plane to do the same sort of positioning that is done by laser cutters, plotters, and 3D printers if you take out the third dimension. These systems almost always use a belt and pulley system for precise, precise positioning, and that is almost certainly better if you can fit the work object into the bed. The two-member planar robot could conceivably be used to paint a wall that is already in place. I, of course, don't expect the initial prototypes to be forceful enough and precise enough to really do something like that well, but progress is made by taking baby steps as fast as you can toward the goal. To that end, I am sure that if you have followed me this far, you're probably thinking of a dozen or so improvements that can be investigated right off the bat. Here are the ones that appeal to me most. Make a 3D printer design for the bobbin, a pretty 3D printed design for the bobbin that holds the coils and sensors. Add Hall effect sensors to detect when we have failed to move correctly. Add color sensors that allow us to detect position from a cold start based on colors painted on the push rod. Construct an actuator shaft for the bobbin so that we really have a structural member. Develop a modular way to address many glut members at one time. My basic plan is to work on these things to attempt to build the two member planar robot. In addition to the one quarter inch diameter magnet size, I have also built some working prototypes using one eighth inch magnets. One possible advantage of the current linear motor approach is that it may be possible to make smaller actuators than can be made using rotary motors and lead screws at a low cost. Even a very small, weak machine made from small glass pushers would make a fun development platform so long as it was strong enough to move itself into programmable positions. Imagine a GLUS composed of 200 members, each a mere 2 inches long, that could sit on your desktop and quickly assume a menagerie of shapes. In closing, let me mention that this is a completely free and open source project. Uh, it is both an open source software and an open source hardware project. I consider it part of a project called Public Invention for All Humanity, which I'm trying to start. I'm going to make a separate video uh, about that um, organization and the principles that we work by. This video has been a technical introduction to the idea of glossionics and gloss robots. It is also my invitation to you to participate. Obviously, we need engineers, both computer and electrical, uh, to work on this problem. However, I would also like to extend, extend a personal invitation to artists, writers, designers, entrepreneurs, and others who can help us work with the raw stuff that we're really dealing with, which is dreams and imagination. 
the in some ways the electronics is the easier part of it the hard part is to determine how to best use these for the benefit of humanity uh, if you have any interest in this and you're interested in participating in open source hardware and open source software project please contact me we can talk about it further and uh, see if there's a, a way to determine something you could do that would be enjoyable and exciting to you thank you